Okay. This one, notice, is a table problem, but it is also a motion problem because we're talking about the velocity of a train. So it says train A runs back and forth, only going east-west. Train A's velocity is measured in meters per second, and they give us a couple different times. Selected values for the velocity of train A are given. Okay. First part, find the average acceleration. So remember, acceleration is just the slope of the velocity. I want the average ac acceleration on the interval from 2 to 8. So those are my points. So I want to find V of 8 minus V of 20 over 8 minus 2. And these numbers are negative 120 minus 100 over 6. And I'm going to just clean this up. So the answer would be meters per minute but then you're dividing by minute again, so it should be minutes squared. It makes sense for acceleration, those are my units. Part B, does the table support the conclusion that train A's velocity is, so is the velocity of train A a negative 100 at some point on this interval? So they're giving us a bunch of y values or velocities for train A, I want to know, can the y value or the velocity of train A ever hit negative 100? So remember, if we want to try to figure out if a function hits a certain y value, we should be thinking intermediate value theorem. So notice that the velocity at 5 is 40, and the velocity at 8 is negative 120. So they told us that this is a differentiable function, which means that it's also continuous. So the answer is yes, it has to hit every single y value from negative 120 and 40 because the function is continuous. There's no holes or gaps. So your reason would be, you show me these two, and you say vo the velocity function of train A is continuous. So there is a time t between 5 and 8, we don't know what that time is, such that the velocity of A is negative 100. So you must state that it is continuous. It doesn't necessarily have to be differentiable for the intermediate value theorem. Okay, part C. At time 2, train A's position is 300 meters east of the origin. Okay? So the position of train A at time 2 is 300 meters. And the train is moving to the east. Okay, Write an expression involving an integral that gives us position of train A from the origin at time 12. So basically, I'm looking for the position at time 12. And we're going to use a trapezoidal sum to approximate the position. OK, so first thing, I'm trying to get to position. The only thing I'm given is velocity, so you should be thinking, okay, if I take the antiderivative of the velocity, that will get me to position. I'm given information about time 2. I need to get to time 12, so those are my bounds. So we know the antiderivative velocity will get me to the position at 12 minus the position at 2. So really the idea is if I move this over and rewrite it like this, that will give me the final position at 12, right? Start with the initial position, add on the additional distance of traveling to get to your final. So x of 2 is 300, which is given. This, it says to use a trapezoidal sum with three intervals. So I'm going to do the trapezoid formula three times. So the first trapezoid, area of a trapezoid is 1 half times the height, which is really the width, the two bases are your y values. There's the first trapezoid. Second one is 1 half. Again, height is 3 still, 40 plus negative 120. Second trapezoid, or third one, is 1 half 4. And then negative 120 minus 150. And you can punch all that out if you want. You get negative 150, which is really saying it's 150 meters west of the original station. Okay, last one, it says there's a second train B, it's going traveling north, 
So at time t, the velocity of train b is given by this equation. So for this one, we're given an equation. And at time 2, the train is 400 meters west. So velocity at time 2 is 400. Find the rate in meters per minute at which the distance between train A and train B is changing. Okay, this was the velocity of B. Okay, so let's think about these trains. So you've got train B, which is only going north and south. And then we've got train A, which is going east-west. Okay, I want to know what happens at time 2. So at time 2, okay, we know the velocity of A was 300, okay? So this is A's velocity. I'm just gonna call it A. This is B's velocity. The question is asking, find the rate at which the distance is changing, so I need this velocity. So this is a related rates question. So your velocity is really the derivative of these values. So really, dA dt, we could say is 300 db dt is really 400, and what we're looking for is dc dt. So what's the equation that relates these variables? a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Take the derivative with respect to time, dA dt plus 2b db dt equals 2c dc dt. Uh, the twos can get divided out. Now, I have A, which is 300, DA, DT is 100 at that point. I have B, which is 400, and then DB, DT is 125. And for the C, this is really a 3, 4, 5 triangle, so I could use 500 for C, and now I'm missing just the dc dt. And if you do the arithmetic, you should end up with 160 meters per minute.